Well, we're back in the garden today. Thank goodness it's actually dry, so I'm taking every opportunity I can to be out here, even though I'm working in the greenhouse, which I could still do when it's raining. Um, I'm gonna pot on all of these peppers, first of all. You might have caught my video yesterday on one of the vlogs saying that I wasn't undecided where the peppers were going to go. Um, still undecided today, so I'm just gonna get them into larger pots. Stephen is busy here, as you can hear too. Um, but they're going into this size pot for now, and then we'll see where we get on from there. I'm taking the opportunity while Stephen stopped banging to show you what I'm doing. So I've been taking the peppers out of this size pot. What's that? Is that like a three inch pot? I'm putting them into probably double the size pot for now. As I say, because this isn't going to be their final resting place, so to speak. I'm just putting them in to give them a little bit more a little bit more growing space, a bit more space for the roots. And what is interesting, some of them I've noticed are extremely damp. So you can see this one here. I'm not sure if it's coming across, but that one's a lot more damp. And this one is really dry yet they've both had the same water in and that's why i've lost some of them because the contact with the um of the pot with the bottom of the propagator being uh, feeding them from the bottom i love being better for this pot than the pot that this one was in so that's why i did lose a couple of the peppers but i've still got absolutely plenty uh this variety here that i'm doing what's this one called it's the calbi however you pronounce it calbi sweet um and so is, so is this one i've done some californian wonders some anaheim and some orange bells so far now what i'm doing is when i'm taking them out of this pot i'm using the opportunity to pot on some of the other things i've done a whole load of sprouts um as well and i'm just looking around to what else I've, i haven't done any of these today these have been previous pottings on um but that's what i'm doing so that i'm kind of trying to multitask and trying to get as much done at once as possible we're going really well, we're getting there. Now, if you have not watched any of my videos before, you might think that this is looking like a really unhealthy plant. This is actually an overwintered tomato, and I'm about to take out that bit there, which is a standing up here. <laughs> that's a side shoot. The main stem is this bit that's fallen over here. Now, the way that I've been managed to overwinter this is just I keep taking the side shoots off the mother plant. Um, as the mother plants died off the side shoots, I've then made sure that I've rooted them in a fresh compost. I've not done it any other way. I've just literally put it in compost, watered it. That's then grown, produced another side, side shoot. Side shoot, took the side shoot and pot potted it on again. And literally that's how I've kept it going on over the winter. I'm a bit disappointed that the main stem has rotted a tiny bit. Let me show you. So this main stem here has rotted and obviously fallen over, but there's some really healthy little side shoots coming off here too. So there's one here that I've got hold of, another small one, but this is also one. So that's what I'm about to do now. I'm literally gonna snip this off here and I'm just gonna put it in another pot of compost. And then unfortunately, this main mother plant will uh, will go into the compost itself. But th the reason I'm disappointed is because these have, have got the blue, the reason I'm disappointed is these um, the main mother plant is already starting to throw off flowers. So if that stem hadn't have rotted, I'd be able to, to have some really early tomatoes from this. But never mind, I'm pleased that we've managed to overwinter it all the same. Okay, so what I've done, I've taken those two side shoots that I showed you um, and just literally put them in compost. I've took the lower leaves off. This is what's left of the main mother stem that has got the flowers on it or flower buds that are just starting. So I'm wondering if I literally just also put this in some compost. What have I got to lose? You never know, that might work. Well, I am fast running out of space. So some of these peppers here you can see have got the um, the sticks in, the canes with a little bit of supporting tape. Others haven't, the likes of this, I just haven't got to yet. Some of the others don't actually need it. The um, tomatoes with the small bits of cane in, that's just to identify that that's an overwintering one just for me personally. And you can see I've just watered these guys here maybe a little bit too harshly. <laughs> um, so we've got all kinds of different tomatoes pricked on in here, as well as the peppers. And I think that's all. Oh no, there's the cucumbers and I've been an idiot with the cucumbers. So what I've done, I had my Tamara cucumbers. So I know that that one there is definitely a Tamara cucumber. And I had gherkins as well. If you might remember a slug came in or a snail and um, ate the lot of them. Well, I say the lot of them, barring one or two. And now I've got them mixed up. So I can't remember what's what. Anyway, hopefully they will all grow on. And at least I know the Tamara cucumber. The others obviously will be obvious when they grow across the gherkins. So yeah, looking really pleased. I'm gonna leave the front off this propagator at the moment because it's a really warm day. And then what I think I'm gonna do after we've had some lunch is get these onions while the weather's dry. So I don't know if you can see in the distance, that bed there, 
is going to have onions in and I think these guys are just about ready. The roots are on the bottom so I think I'm comfortable with getting these out and I'm not even sure. I may just get these guys out as well. We'll wait and see or I may put them into these cells for another week um, and go on from there. The Walla Walla, terrible germination. So I'll just probably um, just maybe do these in pots or something. I'm not too sure. And then the leeks I've also got, which are over here. So this is what I potted on yesterday, a lot thinner. So these will definitely just stay in here for a little while. And this is all of the peppers that we've got left to do. And there's a very busy man, a very happy man. Every single bit of that wood was free. You just had to go and pick it up. So in between doing this, we've fed the lambs and we've been doing bits and pieces of other things. So it's lunchtime now. I'm gonna go and get something to eat for both of us. And then as I say, I'll get on and probably get those onions in. It is extremely blustery today, but there's no rain. Um, it's really mild as well. At the moment in the greenhouse, it's 23.2 degrees centigrade. Um, and it's really mild outside, maybe about 17 or 18 over here over here being in the northeast um so yeah we're going to work on that bed i think when we come out unless it starts raining when we're getting something to eat we'll see but hopefully a productive afternoon to come well it is very very windy but that is the tray of onions that was in this 60 onions also and that's ailsa craig and exhibition variety well, it's the next day and I made some good strides with those peppers yesterday, but I'm determined to get those finished today because I want to be able to empty that propagator to get on with the next lot of sowings and things. They don't necessarily need heat, but at least if I can keep everything in the same area, that's going to be really helpful. So full afternoon ahead of me, lots of gardening to get done. Let's see what I can achieve. We're recharging a little bit. There are 12 peppers left to do um, and they're kind of the smallest plants. So I'm, I've just given them water because they were really dry. And I'm moving on to getting some seeds sown in the greenhouse. We're going to do some direct sowing as well because I need to update you guys on a couple of decisions that we've made out in the plot. But I wasn't going to get any super mama or the big mama tomato seeds this year. Somebody got in touch with me and said that they'd got some and it was because of seeing me growing them and how well I liked them that they'd got them. And I thought, no, you don't need any more tomato strays. You don't need any more. Anyway, I've got some more. <laughs> obviously these seeds haven't been um obviously it's quite late for these seeds compared to the other ones that i've got but it still should be plenty of time to be able to get a decent crop and the other one that i didn't get this year that i did mention was the outdoor girl tomatoes um these are literally are my outdoor cropping tomatoes but i am going to try some other of the varieties that you've seen me get outside as well i'm not sure where all of these are going to go yet but regardless there are only five seeds in each of these packs so then i'm just going to stick to the five and i'm going to really try and overwinter some of these this year i did try for this variety last year and i was only successful with the one country taste um which i don't have any from seed for that anyway and i'm going to get quite a few outdoor girl in and if i don't use them i'll just pass them on so that's what i'm going to get done for so that's what i'm going to get it done blah, blah, blah. So that's what I'm going to get done now. Well, I'm making good progress with the seeds. Um, two minutes ago, I was literally about to turn the camera on and I just thought, oh, I'll just get some different seeds in. I've got some more lettuce and other things in. There was the loudest plane that just flew overhead. Like, I've never heard anything so loud from it. It was, it was frightening. Grace was in the barn and she came out really frightened. And it just literally flew overhead. I felt like I could touch it. It was that close. And that has been happening more and more and more recently. But this was the loudest and the fastest. And I know no doubt we'll hear somewhere that there's some training going on or something like that. And then the heavens have just opened. And it's just making me smile because um, for the comments on the videos, I tried to reply to them like I sit down and get there quite a few done at once. Um, and I did notice that there was one from Mick saying, asking if we'd seen about the chemtrails and the conspiracy theory there and it did make me think <laughs> i was like i know it hasn't just flown over and just dumped a load of rain on us but it did make me think i'll just leave it at that but uh, yeah that was that was quite frightening we were heading we being you and i outside to get the parsnips on and i'm going to show you what's going on as soon as this stops again i did think it was stopping while i was talking then but it's um it's still quite heavy it's just one of those where there was just a deluge and Grace has been uh, doing her thing and she's ran off into the barn the other way. So we'll head out in just a moment while my heart slows down. Goodness me. Guys, it's safe to come out. Right. So the parsnips. Do you remember we talked about putting parsnips in this bed and I said, well, 
this bed needs topping up with a lot of compost or topsoil or whatever um so we're going to need to get that done before i can get the parsnips in i said will it be okay to sow them a little bit later did my research and thank you for answering guys um yes it will absolutely and probably even for a little while just yet oh look the dandelions are out hang on um concentrate however i was chatting to stephen about it and he had a really good idea don't tell him <laughs> right take a look at this do you remember this bed here? So this is where we have the Jerusalem artichokes. We had the compost bays at the back. We decided to leave that fencing up in, ca in case we ever use compost bays there again. And I went through and I've weeded it, believe it or not. <laughs> Obviously it needs doing again. And he said, why don't you use this bed for parsnips and other root vegetables and things instead of using it for the squash. So I was going to use this all for winter squash, that kind of thing. Just let them sprawl out because I have to admit this bed isn't one of my favourite beds. It's just, you can see, okay, so it's full of stones no matter how many times I try and take all of the stones out they just keep coming back to the surface every time there's a rain and the worms throw them up and everything i go back through i take them out it's never been as well fertilized as the others um there's not no reason for, particularly for that it's just it's just the way it is however i'm thinking what he's saying about the parsnips is a really really good idea so what i'm going to do because this bed goes quite low down you can get a, a good fork in it whereas some of the the raised beds here for example your fork will only go down into where this um ground starts the gravel starts effectively not the case for this bed so i'm going to get some of these weeds out now or all of these weeds out and then i think we'll get a couple of rows of parsnips sown and i'm wondering do i even go and sow some of the beetroot direct as well oh, do you know it, it's so difficult at this time of the year it's kind of tempting because it feels really warm everything now but i've just been looking at the forecast and it's going to be down to two degrees quite a few nights still so i think that's a little bit too but then i could put some fleece on so these are the kind of decisions that i like to have you know these are the like the kind of difficult choices that i like to have on my time off <laughs> so we're going to get some parsnips in for definite and the beds where the parsnips were going to go um which is what i was saying needed topping up i've just got to it now this bed here so if you if you didn't know on the pre, one of the previous videos you can see the black membrane around the side i was saying that the beds needed topping back up to there and we were going to use some of the um topsoil we we're going to buy in more topsoil but it's just so expensive to get this done and, and at the end of the day how many parsnips can we buy for the amount it would cost us with the um to buy the topsoil and we can then just top this up later on in the year with our own free manure once that's rotted down and composted so i think that's a really really good idea now now, speaking of the topsoil, this bed here has got the carrots in. It's not a single one showing yet, but I didn't expect that. I'm a little bit concerned at how it's kind of smoothed over. Can you see? But when I go in, it's still, it's still kind of. So this is the topsoil. If you if if you're new or you don't know what I'm talking about, topsoil on top of our um, animal manure. Um, and I didn't expect it to kind of look as smooth as it did and it's retained where I had my feet so they were my feet from sowing the the lines of carrots um yeah I'm just not not too sure this is going to work out as well as I thought but anyway we'll have to just wait and see because I didn't expect the carrots to have germinated just yet um so we'll keep an eye on it now the variety of parsnips that I'm sowing this year are the ones that we did last year I'm just getting them here the javelins um these are an f1 variety um, which you know isn't ideal but they were so good and are so readily available that I'm quite happy just going with those for this year so I'll get a few rows of those sown but I need to get the weeds out first right I've actually sown these extremely sensibly I've done them let me show you with proper spacings and everything so fingers crossed that this works I'm not sure if two rows will be enough I'm thinking it won't we'll have a think um so yeah i've just labeled them off that's where they've started i'm leaving this bit here for some bush beans all the way across there that's why i've only started them kind of a foot foot and a half in so i've took them right up to the entrance of the um what was the compost bays i'm thinking about putting some peas across that way in the compost bays i might go and get the canes and get those up and then i can just sow the peas direct as well now the variety of peas I've got are aldermen so they will grow at least twice the height of that pallet fence that's there but I'm thinking how nice would it be to actually have something grow up that fence. 
I'm questioning myself now as to whether maybe I put the peas down the edge here. Of course I've all got this drawn out on a plan and that plan's gone out the window now that we're allowed outside so to speak. Do a plan in winter when you can't get out and then in the spring throw it out the window and just do what you fancy. <laughs> so I'm wondering whether to put some peas down there and I've got sweet peas. Maybe I could put some nice sweet peas there to kind of hide that and I don't know. What do you think? We'll see how it works out. Anyway, the other exciting bit of news that I've got, look at this, where did it go? Can you see if I come in, oh, hang on with you and put that behind, look! It's our first asparagus, although it looks like something's had a bit of a nibble at it. And there's some other, once you start seeing one, you start seeing more, some more here. Looking at that, oops, looking at how far on that is, that's quite early actually, um, for us here. I can't wait to have asparagus and dippy eggs. Oh my goodness, I've been looking forward to that. We're having more and more eggs now that we've got an absolute abundance of them on a small holding and having asparagus is obviously much healthier for you, but not just that. Oh my goodness, it tastes absolutely fantastic. I can feel my excitement rising. Finally getting plants into the ground. Oh my goodness me. What has this weather been doing to us? So I've gone for the sweet pea option because I just think it's going to look, you see where I've got to, amazing. I think it's going to look absolutely fantastic. Um, obviously I can add to the top of the pallet fence um, when they get to that height. Maybe I could intersperse some other things in between and we shall see, but I think it's just going to be an absolute thing of beauty. Some nice colour amongst all of the other things. Um, also, the other, what I'm thinking about doing in this spot is calendula instead of the tall peas, the aldermans, because obviously I won't get to see the sweet peas if I put aldermans in front of them. So I'm going to get the rest of these put in. I've got a, a little, a little few more. They've just dropped to bits because the um, the plant pots at the rain are really old and it's just obviously rotted completely. So they've always picked them up and they, they drop back down on the floor. So I'm going to very carefully get these in the ground now. I'm very, very pleased with this. That was just just came to me one of those ideas. I think that's um, sometimes they're the best ones, aren't they? Look at that. All done. I've taken it right up to the end here. I might try and find another couple just to put in here. I've got um, they were in kind of this size. You can see it's completely disintegrated tray, um, and the other ones that I've got are in a lot bigger. Obviously, I'll be able to split them down a little bit. So I think I'll probably do that just to complete the full um, the full section of palette. And then that's going to be an absolutely a gorgeous little sweet pea enclosed area. I'm very pleased with that. Last the garden job of this video, I'm putting in the very last of the potatoes. Needed to get round to this whilst I was off. I started the beds off this bed here on Good Friday, so all of those went in then. And what I've got in this um, in this bed that I'm doing now, I've just added some pink fir apples. So just at the end, is that what they're called? Pink fir apples? No, it's not apples, potatoes. Um, I've just put those at the very end because we'll be harvesting those first and then I've put in six Yukon Gold and four Bambino um, variety although one of them looks very different in terms of the colour of its chips to the other uh, the other three so I'm not too sure about that one anyway and the last ones that I'm putting in this bed are the good old King Edward these are all main crop varieties I believe um, so I'm going to get these in <laughs> I've still got a lot of sea potatoes that aren't in the ground and I'm fast running out of space where I was planning on planting them. We'll see. You can see me looking around thinking what am I going to do. Anyway, that's all for a different video. Thank you very much for joining me for this one. There will be plenty more gardening videos coming up because we are getting full steam. Well, we're not getting, we are. We're there, full steam ahead. I need to go have us some rhubarb, have us some wild, gar wild garlic and get on with the rest of my night. I'll talk to you very soon on a different video. Thank you very much for watching.